about to see depicts a prison in Vietnam as a result of so distant and unexpected of the defeat of the French in that region in 1954. The whole region did belong to the, to the French, but uh, they were defeated and it was necessary to have a, a new Congress which was held at Geneva. South and North Vietnam were uh, to be independent. Uh, they were to have the right to unification and they were to be entirely free from foreign interference. Everybody agreed to this and the Americans also agreed but their agreement was based on a tacit presupposition that they would not observe its consequences and the Americans have been ever since endeavouring to conquer South Vietnam. A small non-industrial people have been assaulted by an industrial and military colossus. Apart from anything else, the vast bombardment by the United States Air Force with its unimaginable tonnages of this agrarian country is the most supreme atrocity. But it is far worse, worse than this film portrays. The film is restrained, it is careful, it is solicitous of your sensibilities, too much so, for the reality is what na napalm and chemicals do. The napalm transforms people into a bubbling mass, suppurating before the horrified members of the family and village of the victim. Chemicals cause paralysis, convulsions, bloody vomiting and evacuation for months ending in a death of agony. Gas explodes the pupils of the eye, perforates the lungs and slowly asphyxiates. This is a war of obliteration and of experiment. The United States and its military mm, is testing weapons which it has already begun to use in Peru, Congo, Malaya and Guatemala. Let us consider why. President Eisenhower stated in 1953, while the French were still in Vietnam fighting with American backing, and I quote, Now let us assume we lost Indochina. If Indochina goes, the tin and tungsten we so greatly value would cease coming. We are after the cheapest way to prevent the occurrence of something terrible, the loss of our ability to get what we want from the riches of the Indo-Chinese territory and from Southeast Asia. This then is the issue, and it could not be put more clearly. The hungry and oppressed, the downtrodden of the world are in revolt. The exploiter, oppressor and invader is using every fiendish device to maim and destroy. All of us must decide where we stand. The people of Vietnam ought to be regarded as our brothers. It rests with us to stop our rulers from degrading our nation as Hitler degraded Germany. I believe this film is a beginning, no more, towards understanding vividly what is at stake.
On the 7th of February, 1965, United States aircraft flew across the 17th parallel and attacked the Democratic Republic of North Vietnam. A new phase of the attempts by the United States government to impose its own solution in Vietnam had begun. The fighting in the South was going badly for the Americans. This was their justification for carrying the war into the North. In spite of the massive build-up of their forces, over three quarters of South Vietnam, 10 million people, had been freed from the control of the various puppet regimes supported by the United States. Division, for all its helicopters and generalship, is learning the lesson many have learned before. Yet common gorillas do not stand and fight unless it is advantageous for them to do so. Pilots are briefed for attacks on North Vietnam from aircraft carriers, from Guam, from bases in the south. Punitive raids against the North might be used as a bargaining counter against the Liberation Front in the South. The main defense against these air raids was rifle and machine gun fire, and more important than weapons, the determination of the people. Londoners who remember the Blitz can appreciate the absence of fear in the streets of Hanoi as the people prepare to protect their capital city under the constant threat of American bombing. They've won their first victory, the victory over fear. They're more concerned with the news from the fighting fronts in the south and from the other parts of their country which are being bombed. They're taught how to bring down aircraft by rifle fire. People who are not afraid, who face the hostile planes as they sweep into attack, fight back even with rifles. In the countryside, there's the same calm and determination. As bridges are bombed, they're replaced by ferries. Children and old people are evacuated. There's no panic or confusion. These people have been at war for 25 years. Talking with leaders of the liberation forces in the south, or with an underground trade unionist in Saigon itself, one gets the same impression of an obstinate determination to free Vietnam from all foreign interference. It's this determination which has brought together peasants and workers, students and professional men, representatives of all political parties and all religions in the National Liberation Front. This was formed in 1960 to end the United States intervention and establish an all-party government based on neutrality as a first step to the reunification of Vietnam. The struggle against the French colonialists, which ended in the victory of Dien Bien Phu, gave the Vietnamese people an independent country, but one which was divided in two 
in order to facilitate the French withdrawal. By the terms of the Geneva Agreements, free elections should have reunited the country within two years. But the Diem regime, installed and supported in the South by the United States, broke the agreements, refused to hold elections, and began a new war. Organized in guerrilla units, the resistance fought back, bringing down one puppet regime after another and forcing the Americans to raise the number of their troops to a hundred thousand, to a quarter of a million, but to no avail. The Americans no longer try to occupy the countryside. They bombard it. The war is mainly waged at a distance, by plane. The daily average tonnage of bombs dropped on this small country exceeds that of the Second World War. For the Vietnamese people, north and south, the sky is an enemy. In the north, the only sign of the Americans is the roar of planes overhead and the bursting of bombs on the ground. But the people know that invasion is possible. They're ready for it. To understand their feelings, we must remember Britain in 1940, when Nazi planes were the forerunners of an invading force poised on the other side of the channel. Each village has its own defense corps, its home guard against a local attack by parachutists. But if necessary, they can be grouped into an army trained for guerrilla warfare. Macbeth was assured by the witches that his life and the throne he had won by crime were safe until the forest began to move against his fortress. In Vietnam, as camouflage for the guerrilla troops, the forest is on the move. Peasants have become soldiers. Their tools have become weapons. Their rice fields are battlefields. Before division, the southern part of the country supplied most of the food for Vietnam, mainly rice, and the coal mines and mineral wealth were in the north. By splitting the country permanently in two against the terms of the Geneva Agreements, it was hoped to cripple the country and weaken its resistance. Up to 1954, the Vietnamese had to import even nails and sewing needles from France. After the United States imposed a blockade, the Democratic Republic had to make everything for itself with only a few factory buildings, only a few machines without spare parts, only a few trained technicians, they had to build up their industry almost from nothing. 
Now there are two fronts in the North, the war and the economy. Continuous air raids have changed the whole pattern of life. The days are used for the work of defense, the nights for the work of production. At harvest time, the work of getting in the crops and watering the new rice plants never stops, not even for air raid alerts. Alerts are part of daily life taking cover while the planes are overhead, returning to work again at the all clear. This has become the rhythm of life. This is a war waged by a people, by every man, woman and child with whatever weapons they can find. It's the kind of war that defeated Napoleon in Spain and Russia, that helped to defeat Nazi Germany and occupied Europe. Among the young men volunteering to fight with the Liberation Front, at least one in ten has lost his father or seen his mother tortured. They were born into war, brought up during war, matured by war. They belong to a generation that has never known peace. <laughs> sẽ không thể không kêu gọi những người con ruột thịt của miền Nam đã vì tôn trọng hiệp định đình chiến mà tập kết xa Bắc phải xa miền Nam cả chục năm trời nay Nguyen Hu Tho is a lawyer educated in France he is chairman of the Liberation Front he was imprisoned by the Diem regime and released by Liberation forces The strategic command of the front is in the middle of the jungle, safe from attack by helicopters or bombers. From this mobile headquarters, the liberated area, making up over four-fifths of the country, is administered. In the liberated areas, the fields belong to those who work them. Most of the equipment of the Liberation Front was made in America. United States authorities themselves admit that over 80% of the arms used by the front have been captured from American and puppet troops. Food is one bowl of rice for each soldier a day. They travel light, 
strike swiftly, and when some massive concentration of American forces has been ponderously moved into position in a particular area, the guerrilla fighters are always somewhere else. Letters from friends and family separated for over 10 years by the illegal division of the country often take six months to arrive. They are reread to comrades, commented upon, and sometimes edited and published. Vietnam is a country famous for love letters. The making of craps is a traditional activity of the Vietnamese. They've always had to defend their villages from the attacks of wild animals. Over 30 different kinds of traps using sharpened stakes have been devised and the manufacture of bamboo stakes is practically a national industry. Stuck a slant in the ground, they've made vast areas unusable by helicopters. As Ho Chi Minh explains, for 20 years the whole of Vietnam has been a vast trap. Two armies, each of half a million men, have been caught in it. First the French expeditionary force, and then the Americans and their mercenaries in the south. Ho Chi Minh compares the war to a fox hunt. When the two hind paws of the fox are caught by a spring trap, the fox fights like the Americans in the south. He tries to pull himself out. He becomes furious. He strikes at the air with his front paws and catches them in another trap. first period of United States intervention. As soon as the Geneva agreements were signed and the French began to move out, the United States moved in as advisors and specialists to begin with, then more openly in complete defiance of the agreements which prohibited any foreign intervention in the North or in the South. They reorganized the police force and the army they made and unmade governments. Resistance was crushed, patriots executed. They also modernized the nightclubs and brothels on the Katinat Road. Gradually, all pretense of being in Vietnam simply as advisors slipped away. American domination was a fact. The second period of intervention, escalation of the war, the launching of incessant bombing raids on mines, roads, factories and railways in the north. Heavy blows were struck against the new industries of the Democratic Republic and continuous attacks from the air were intended to destroy the morale of the Vietnamese people. This strategy was varied with peace offers based on an acceptance of the permanent division of the country and the right of the United States to continue to occupy the South. Should these offers be refused, plans for even greater escalation of the war were worked out by computer. But there are factors which electronic brains cannot add up. Four thousand years of legend, two thousand years of history, an original civilization called Indo-Chinese because it was neither Hindu nor Chinese. 25 years of resistance to colonial domination. At Geneva in 1954, the sovereign independent state of Vietnam was recognized. One people with the same language and the same culture. The same respect for their own leaders who've guided their struggle for so many years. They cannot be divided by computers. Once a year at Christmas, the sky showers upon North Vietnamese children, toys and leaflets, presents from the psychological department of the United States forces. The same sky that for the rest of the year rains down on them napalm and high explosive bombs. Each factory, each settlement, has its numbered sequence in the mathematical progression of bombardments worked out logistically. 
this escalation of death is based on the psychological premise that if you kill enough people, a country will stop resisting. The same false psychology that Hitler used against the British people. The stake for the United States government is no longer Vietnam, neither its wealth nor its strategic importance. The object now is to prove once and for all that the peoples of Asia or of Africa or of Latin America cannot resist a country which has the most powerful arms. Vietnam is the laboratory in which the Pentagon is testing its techniques of anti-insurrectionary war. The Vietnamese people are its guinea pigs. One of the most vaunted of these techniques is the blanket bombing by the giant B-52s and 57s. Originally designed for carrying atomic weapons, these planes are capable of dropping enormous loads of conventional bombs. They plaster a district of two square miles, leveling trees, destroying dikes, leaving nothing in their wake but a pockmarked desert like a landscape on the moon. In Washington, the project of bombing the dikes and rivers of the north, spreading flood and famine over a whole land, is calmly discussed by generals who enjoy the confidence of their president. But many sections of the American people do not support this war in their name. There is a rising tide of opposition to the government's policy in Vietnam. When an air raid warning sounds, everyone knows what he has to do. Some take the children and the sick into shelters. Others man the anti-aircraft defenses. Others still continue working in spite of the danger. The work must go on. Men and women, side by side, working and fighting together. 25 years of war have taught the Vietnamese courage and determination and unity. Their skill and intelligence have been developed in struggle. Everything they have to do is well planned. How to attack, how to defend themselves, how to treat the prisoners who fall into their hands. It is their country and they all have a stake in it. In the areas they've won back, the land is redistributed and a plot is kept for each fighting man. strange war, 
a war in which the opposing forces inhabit quite different realms. On the ground, working and fighting together the people of Vietnam. In the air, the enemy. Their planes pass overhead at the speed of sound. But when they have gone, the people say, we are still here, on the ground, in our own country. Vietnam will live free or die. How long will it take us to understand this? <laughs> 